Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to my channel, Humble Beginnings in Atlanta. That's what we're calling it. And uh, I'm just giving an update. For those of you who have families who are thinking about moving your family to Atlanta, I have been here, me and my family, since March the 22nd of 2019. So uh, today is July the 20 i believe it's the 29th yes july the 29th so i've been here for like what uh, march april may june july so it's been maybe four a little little four months um that um me and my family been down here i wanted to give an update i want to give um some of the things that i truly truly like about atlanta and i'm gonna come up with five of them and I think this is really necessary. And, and again, this is geared towards families. It, you can take what you want from it if you're a single person. Because when it comes down to relocating, you need to know as much as you can. So if you're a single parent, if you are a big family, you know, a family of, you know, two more parents. Or if you're single, you, I'm sure you can find some interesting information with my videos. Make sure you subscribe. Put on that notification by ringing that bell because I don't have a set schedule. When I can, I upload, okay? And I also want to um, point you in the direction of the old family. Um, the old family, I watch myself. There are enough families down here in Atlanta. So after you watch my video, go over to the old family and um, check them out as well because they're another family that, that uploads stuff about um, moving to the ATL. Well, anyway, I still like it down here. I really do. And let me see, number five. I'm going to count it going backwards, if you may. So number five, the fifth reason I like being down here in Atlanta. Uh, the weather. And, you know, everybody talks about how hot it is. And it is. It's hot. Oh, my goodness. It's so hot down here. But it is not the type of hot that the sun is beaming 24 7 when it's 90 degrees it has like an overcast most of the time meaning that it's a lot of clouds and then that's something that i didn't really thought um was going to come with the package as much as it has but um because of the hot weather um it has a tendency to rain a lot down here and it's so funny like right now the, it's cloudy and but it's a hot day. It's nothing for it to be a few days in a row, 90s. And yes, it does have some humidity to it. But the way you work that all out is, of course, have a good air conditioning system. And because um, where I live at is AC'd, and then my jobs is AC, and my car is AC, you know, I basically be on a mission of getting the job done. So I'm always either in and out. Um, an environment that has AC. Um, they do have spots that I have been to, and I'm going to start showing you some of these spots because I try to make sure my son is kept very, you know, um, entertained that I have to go out in the elements, you know. But uh, for the most part, believe it or not, I, and, and I love, I'm a spring fall person, but I am actually getting to be adjusted to this hot weather. It's hot. And understand this, when you come down here, especially in the summertime, because I was told that it could stay hot up until November. Um, and one person told me, it's been a few times that their weather has been hot, meaning 80, 90s, late 80s, up 80s to 90s, even up until close to Christmas time. So this is my first year being down here, and I cannot wait to experience what it is to be in Atlanta when it is, like, hot. That, that's going to be so so amazing. So um, just make sure you're hydrated and that you're wearing clothes that allow you to be able to breathe and stuff, and it will be okay. One thing that I have seen people do that I'm going to start doing, you remember back in the old times, they would take their umbrellas out. A lot of times, some of the Caribbean people do this. They'll have the umbrella, you know. A lot of people carry umbrellas, not just when it's raining, but when it's sunny outside to when when the sun do, you know, do break through the clouds, they'll have an umbrella um, just to put 
them in instant shade. So keep an umbrella with you because you're going to utilize the umbrella a lot down here. Number four. The fourth thing that I really like about down here, they have a lot of festivals. Oh my goodness. It is so much entertainment. You go on and Google, you know, like um, uh, activities for families in Atlanta or events in Atlanta. Whether you use Eventbrite or you just Googled and go with it. It is such a mass amount of festivals every weekend down here. So if you're looking to go to different outings and stuff and you're willing to you know travel a little bit around the um Atlanta metro area um in each county they always have something going on always have something going on and because they start school early down here like I come from up north in the Delaware area and up north we start school in September late August to September and we end it in June well down here they start school early August, like this year for Del Cap County. Um, they start school um, August the fifth, and some of us started actually late part of July. Believe it or not, a lot of private schools start, and I'm like, wow. And then they end their school year before Memorial Day. Believe it or not, by Memorial Day, the schools are ended for that that year so um we had to adjust to this and we could ready to go school shopping um later on this week from for my son so he can start school but the one thing i truly adore that i have not gotten when i was up north all over the place in the last couple of weeks just before um school opens they always have a back to school fair you know and their back to school fairs are a little bit more than what we get up north. Everyone has to make sure that their um, immunizations, of course, and physicals and hearing and, and dental has to be on point every year for your child to get into school down here. Now, you know, most of the time, anywhere in the United States, that's how it's supposed to be anyway, you know. But what they do that is very helpful, they have these fairs that they will actually have people there that will help you get your child's immunization, um, physicals, as well as the dental and the hearing tests all up to date in one day. So like if you um, are having a hard time getting a doctor's appointment, if you catch one of these fairs, out here back to school fairs because most of them are done on the weekends that I noticed that you can get that done still right then and there. All you have to do is show proof of address or proof that your child is um, enrolled in one of the county schools and then you can get it and um, it's free. Whereas though if you go to like say the Georgia Health Department they will charge you a certain fee if you don't have like Medicare Medicaid to pay it or if you go to your doctor's office you know depending on your type of insurance you may or may not have to come out your pocket with something you know it is what it is so they do give you options and we just went to one this weekend and um my son was up to date with all his um shots and his immunizations because we had got all that done before coming down and then we had to do um some transfer information when he first came down to be able to get enrolled in the school back in March. So we're good. And so, you know, next year around this time, it's around March time. But um, the other things that we found that was interesting in the back to school um, fair that they had was that they had resources of all the communities, um, resources there, which was great, especially since we were very new to the area. So they had everyone um, have like this little checklist. And you had to go to 10 vendor spots. And it was like over 30 some. But you picked 10. And you learned a little bit about each of the vendors there. And um, then they'll sign you off. You get all 10 spots signed. And then the next thing you can do is get in line to either get your free book supplies. Book back, backpack with supplies uh, for your kid. Or... Or both, or you can go to um, the line 
because the um like the Georgia Food Bank was also there and they were giving away food. So it, it was an awesome thing. So some of the resources that we went to, we went to um the resource tables that had something to do with the dental care. Um some of the um after school programs that was in the area. Um legal aid had is one one we went to and then it was some other community type stuff that was geared to depending on where you lived at in the county, you know, you can get help from them and stuff. And it was all all geared towards family. Family, your child, but mostly it was family, so it was very, very helpful. I mean they gave um each child was able to get a hot dog and uh, you know some snacks and stuff. Everybody was welcome to have free water to keep you hydrated because it was hot. And if you wanted to buy a meal, adults, you know, you can because they had other food vendors with the food trucks and stuff there too. So it was a great time. They had bouncy houses. They had activities for the kids to play with. You know, it was a really, really good time, a good outing, a good outing for me and my family to go to and stuff. So they do this apparently every year. So look out for that. You know, look out for the activities um, um, on Eventbrite and Google you know it up as well as things that's geared towards the kids. Okay, number three, the third thing that I like about down here. Who can't you tell, child? I like the dag on food. Um, I don't have a problem finding food. Now, I probably most likely talked a little bit about the food before, but I want to throw out a couple of foodie places that I just want you to research and try if you come down here around the ATL. Now, everybody talks about the um, Slutty Vegan, which is a good place. They have, um, oh gosh, she serves like a vegan style meat um, on um, this vegan type of honey, um, Hawaiian um, bread roll. And stuff and it's pretty good it's pretty good she, she she found a good recipe I think she has anywhere from five to six burgers don't quote me on that only got a chance to try one the line is long but it's a good experience because you stand in the line and you get a chance to know people you have a good atmosphere um is it's people coming from all over the city and I think I was able to get in and get out with me and my family about 45 to an hour and stuff, which was apparently good because some people actually have stayed over two hours in this line. Another foodie place that you want to try if you love some seafood. Ooh, I got two places. One is called um, the Juicy Crab. Now, um, sometimes, you know, the locals say, I don't go to that place and stuff. And me and my husband almost didn't go because of the locals. But then we ran to some other locals, and they was like, oh, yeah, try it out. Oh, love it, love it, love it. We had got um, crab clusters, um, what, Alaskan crab and um, some shrimp and some mussels, and they steam it all in the bag with some um, nice spice, garlic, and, and butter. And um, then they ask you what level of heat you want because if you want it light, medium, or hot, they can give it to you. Um, I always get it mild because I don't know how people... I like spicy food, but I don't want too much spice. And I like to control my spice. That's the best word for it. So uh, we sat down. And this is one thing that they do down here that I have not experienced up north. And I love my seafood. Up north, we have a tendency, if we want to eat crabs and stuff, we go with our hands, eat it. That's part of the experience and stuff, right? Down here, they want to get dainty and protect themselves. So they put plastic gloves on. They make sure you have the apron. You know, we do apron up there, too. And basically, by the time you finish cracking, because it is a messy event, you finish, you roll your gloves up, you take everything off, and the way you came in, which is clean, you leave out clean. Which is all good, you know. So that was different from what I experienced up north eating um, crabs. They don't have that much blue crabs down here. So if you're looking to get the same Maryland style crabs, uh, you're not going to get it. They do have what's like a garlic crabs that they use um, blue crabs for. Um, but it's not Maryland style, even though they say it's Maryland style crabs. And they use a lot of Dungeness. They use um, the snow crabs. And see, I've been... Up north, I've been eating always eating my blue crabs, right? So, um, but when I went to Juicy Crab, I did like the Alaskan crab and stuff. So, <sighs> I was raised in Maryland. I, I, I got a 
still a favorite, my favorite, but it is what it is. Another seafood place is called the Crab Pot. Now, the Crab Pot is um, located in College Park. Um, College, I think it's called College Park. College Park, Georgia. It's a nice little place that, that you can also get in some nice crabs. I like the juicy crab better, but that's not bad as well. Okay. Um, when it comes down to um, beef, they got all these different types of... Um, I think the number one food I seen down here was always some um, poor pork, um, uh, brisket, uh, barbecue places. That's what I'm trying to say, barbecue places. So they got barbecue places all over the place. And if you drive down here, you'll notice also that they have advertisement coming down the road for cookout, cookout, cookout. I've been there one time. Cookout is... To me, like a Burger King, but it's a different brand. So they basically um, had burgers there and other stuff, you know, um, on their menu that's geared towards grill type of cookout type food. So it, that was cool as well. Um, so I'm just throwing some stuff out there. Um, and, and and when it more come, I'll give you some more suggestions and stuff when it come down to that. Number two, the second thing that I truly do like down here. I actually do like the people. I find that when it comes down to even though there's a lot of traffic down here more than I experience up north at least at least when I'm trying to get into traffic, I have the courtesy given to me by a stranger. Whereas though up north I had to fight to get in traffic down here they will at least allow you to get in. But be mindful now be mindful, even though the Curtis, they get in a lot of car accidents down here. 285, 75, 85, Route 400, um, they come some high traffic areas. 20 is high traffic too, but not as bad as the others that I mentioned. 78, that seems to be pretty cool. I like that one. That's a mild one and stuff. But um, you be careful. There's a lot of cars that seems to be busted up. and People ain't even interested in getting their cars fixed. They'll have all these dents and everything. And up north, you know, people tend to get the cars fixed up there. But down here, I guess it is what it is. I don't know what they, what's going on. Um, but it is what it is. So, yes, you'll get courtesy to get in line. But be careful. I have taken the back roads a lot to get around. And, I, and I've been managing the traffic better like that i just give myself some extra time and it's so many beautiful houses that's down here i just take it as a time of being able to um go through the beautiful houses and look at it as i'm going to work or coming from work or wherever i'm going so i do a lot of sightseeing while i'm taking care of business okay <laughs> number one the number one thing that i like down here hmm what can I say? See, the people are friendly. Hmm. What is the number one thing that I like down here? You know what? The number one thing that I find that I like down here is I got peace. Believe it or not, I've had more peace in my life being down here. Um, I find that um, when I was up north, things seemed to be a little bit more... Um, costly. So I'm going to say economy, number one. Things was more costly up north. You can buy a house down here and let me let me say this again. It's been known that people up north can say they had a house that was worth, say, $350,000. Right? They can sell that house, get the money from that house, move down south. And for the same type of house that was worth 350 up there, you can get a house down here for half of that. That's no job. With land, that's no job. So people have been doing that. They've been popping their money, and they buy inexpensive houses that's the same quality, same square footage, and, and come with a little bit more land. And that's been a growing trend, believe it or not, that's been going down, coming down here. So, number one, I would say the economy. Um, it's a little bit more cheaper for things down here than up north. You, that, that means that your pay is not going to be this much as up there because, you know, the economy is a little, a little bit more higher. 
but you can manage a little bit more down here as opposed to up there. So number one, I'm going to say economy. Um, yes, you pay taxes, but I haven't seen it being so much of a burden, especially since I have just recently relocated from a state like Delaware that we don't have sales tax. But I haven't seen a big difference in paying the tax. You know, so I hope that helps some of y'all. Um, I gave my five top reasons of why I like it down here. And um, as time goes on, I do plan on, up, up, you know, updating you more with some stuff. But if you have any comments, like I said, please subscribe. Um, as things go on, I'm going to update you, let you know. If you have any questions, please let it be known. Um, and I thank you so much for coming to my channel. This is some humble beginnings. I'm going to start getting my husband in the near future. He, he'll warm up to it. Come on, and my son. So you can hear from a kid's point of view, you know, how they feel relocating and some of the things that we had to, um, you know, overcome as a family down here and stuff. You know, trying to keep it real. Trying to keep it real. Okay? So thank you so much. This is Stephanie. Love you all to death. Humble beginnings. You are my family. Family, take care. Bye-bye.